there, my name is Emma, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I make weekly videos on DIY, upcycling, and art, so if that interests you, make sure you subscribe. The other day, I was browsing on anthropology.com for some inspiration, and I saw this gorgeous light fixture for $750, and I thought, I could make that, and I did, and I made it out of trash. They have light fixtures like this one, and they also have a chandelier version, so let me know in the comments if you want me to DIY that one as well. I was able to make this piece entirely out of trash, except for the light portion, but I honestly love it without the lights. I think it looks amazing as a standalone piece, but without further ado, here's how I did it. First step in this DIY is gonna be finding our supplies, and of course I had Benny help me do that. I found this tree which produced the coolest kind of wavy twigs. It's super important that you find the ones that are completely dried out. It doesn't have to be this exact type, but the curve is really, really nice for what I'm doing. I collected a bunch and then I tried to sort through them and find two of them that had a similar curve but weren't too curved because the light fixture I'm going for has kind of an S shape to some extent. So I wanted to find ones that looked nice and thick and had a similar curve on the top. So you can see they're really, really similar. They need to be thick because this is going to be the base for all of my other twigs to come out of. I measured how long I wanted to and then cut them in the middle. So I ended up with two pieces that were a nice, subtle S curve. In order to stabilize it a little bit more, instead of just gluing it, I got some wire and wire cutters and I cut a tiny piece of wire and used some pliers to shove it into one side of the stick and then I will place the other side of the stick on it and it should slide in pretty easily. This is gonna give it some nice stabilization. You can also add some glue. Then I brought back all of the rest of my sticks and I'm going to plan out almost like a feather-like shape where it's gonna be a little bit thicker at the bottom and a little smaller at the top. And I'm using now only the ends of the sticks. So those are gonna provide me with some nice curves and I'm just cutting them off, not worrying about the angle too much. I'll be going back later and making sure all of the cuts line up with the stem as I glue. I did a preliminary cutting and then went back and added a few smaller ones and I ended up with 18 sticks in total. I then got out my hot glue gun and began carefully gluing them along the center stick. I did go back and cut the correct angle so there's a little bit more surface area as I'm gluing and then the best hack <laughs> that I found out while doing this was using my blow dryer on the coolest setting to speed up the process because you don't want these all lying flat. You want some of them to be a little bit raised so there's a lot of dimension in the piece as you're creating it and using a blow dryer on the coolest setting will help speed up the process by so much. After that was done, I got my handy dandy gold spray paint and painted the entire thing and let it dry as I made my butterflies. In order to get my butterfly shape even I like to fold my paper in half as I'm drawing them so I sketched out two different sizes a larger one and a slightly smaller one and I'm going to draw half of my butterfly and then I'll cut it out and hopefully if I do it right both halves will be nice and even and if you don't do it right the first time because it's a little bit hard to visualize you can always do it again but I really like this hack to make sure everything is nice and even because I definitely can't rely on my own instinct to make sure everything is even. Thankfully, they came out pretty nice, so I grabbed my upcycled sheet of plastic. I get these sheets from canvas packs from Michaels, so that's how these are upcycled. They're normally in the front of canvas packs, and I laid that right on the shapes, and I'm going to use these to make a stencil because they're a little bit more durable. I could just trace the outline of the paper, but paper is really floppy and flimsy, so this plastic is gonna give me a nice rigid structure that I can trace on. And also I'm going to be using this plastic to make the rest of the butterflies. After I carefully cut out my butterfly, I taped the edge that I cut into, and now I have a nice square stencil that I can use to trace the inside of more of that sheet of plastic. Now, obviously not everyone's gonna buy canvas packs, so this material can be bought on its own and it would be called acetate. You could also probably do this DIY 
fly out of paper as well instead of plastic. Obviously plastic's gonna be a little bit more durable and harder to mess up, but you could do it out of paper if you wanted to. Once I had traced a bunch of shapes, I realized I didn't have to trace every single one. I could put my plastic on top of another piece and get multiple done at once. I tried just holding the pieces together at first, but I realized it was a little bit easier to use some tape and then cut at the bottom so it's still tucked together as I'm going. And then at the very end, that piece of tape will finally be cut off and that is going to be a lot easier. Once I had cut out about 30 butterflies total, I took an X-Acto knife and I lightly scored the middle and folded each one over. That's gonna give it dimension, but I'm not cutting all the way through. So it's gonna give it a little bit of a curve, but isn't going to ruin it. Then I'm gonna make sure I'm painting the back sides first. So that curve is gonna be facing us, get the back sides first, and then I flipped all of them over and very carefully painted the front side. These were a little bit more finicky, but still worked. And now it's finally time to assemble everything together. It is super important that you are not using the hot glue and immediately putting the butterflies on. The plastic will melt, so I did multiple sections at once, kind of let it dry a little bit, and then started putting the plastic on because the plastic definitely will melt and warp if you're using the hot glue right away. I made sure I was placing the biggest butterflies in the middle at first and then the smallest ones closest to the edges. I also want some that kind of overlap and I don't want them to all be laying straight on the sticks. I want them to kind of be at different angles. I did have to make a few more at the very end. My guess was a little bit off, so I needed probably 35 of them total to fill out, but the result is so worth it. This is without any lights. This is just, if you want it as is, it is absolutely gorgeous and stunning. And it's so lightweight. I was able to just put a nail in my wall and then lightly balance it on. Now, if you want some lights, you can put a nail in the wall and then attach some fairy lights that I just got from the dollar store using a command strip or duct tape, and then just put it on top. It's so lightweight that using a teeny tiny nail will be plenty fine. And it looks so good with the lights too. I mean, I'm in love with this piece. My boyfriend even suggested it could be a cool centerpiece for a table if you use some fake candle lights. I'm obsessed. I am really proud of this piece and how expensive it turned out looking, especially considering it is made entirely of trash. Of course, the lighting aspect isn't quite as strong, but I love the piece as it is. And you could also put it in front of a real light bulb or somehow fix it to a real light bulb. So if you wanted the lighting piece to be bigger, you could definitely do that with an LED light bulb. Because it's just glued together, of course it's gonna be slightly flimsy, so I wouldn't throw it across the room, but I was moving it around a bunch, taking it on and off the wall as I was filming, and it was totally fine. So as long as you just put it on the wall and let it be, you should be okay. Unless you have cats or something that like to jump on things, but other than that, you should be fine. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and let me know what other dupes you wanna see me try to make in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and happy making.